Hey everybody, this is Elisa. I'm back. We're talking about the respiratory system, and this time we're going to look at those lungs. Here they are. Here's some the large-scale gross anatomy of the lungs. We talked a little bit about the trachea, bringing the air in and out. Uh, it bifurcates into the bronchi, right, so watch the left and right side, um, and that is going to help ventilate this lung. And so, like. The lungs are basically like literally these swim bladders from back when uh, we were more, you know, uh, aquatic. And these swim bladders like in, in fish, uh, you know, they evolved a long time ago. And so like their whole goal is, is to just take in air, right? And that allows fish to kind of float and just remain more at the surface level of the water. Okay, and then there's more like food and there's more sunlight and it just generally was kind of like a thing. And so one of the things is like, because it was like the first real structure that allowed air, right, to be like inside of the body, it also allowed um, some elements of being able to pick up uh, oxygen and then gas exchange through some of the peripheral tissues that were surrounding the outside of these swim bladders, right? And so over time, they became lungs by doing this. Like, basically, we just needed a lot more square footage, right? We needed like, you know, I mean, it's seriously something huge, like um, a football field or like half of a soccer field, if you were to take all the alveoli and all of the tissue of the lungs and just lay it out, right? It's, it's like a ton of square footage. And so because we were able to kind of like twisted in on itself using this like tiny little alveoli, which we'll look at in a minute, uh, structure, we were able to have enough um, gas exchange between these little capillaries that were around the swim bladder. And then of course, you know, uh, the lungs itself to sustain being on basically land. Okay. So that's the, that's the fast and dirty of how lungs got there. Um, they still develop the same way, honestly. Uh, in utero, right, uh, evo devo, right, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny and all that good stuff. So let's take a look at the lung structure generally. They are not super symmetrical. Okay, like here is uh, one side of the lung. The um, right side of the lung is going to be like three, right? So the right side has three. And then like the left side has like one really big lobe and then like one small lobe. So it's like the left side has two, and it also has this cardiac notch. Or some people say impression. I think it's like a notch because it looks like a notch, right? Um, so there's that. Um, there's the superior lobe. There is the inferior lobe on both halves. So superior lobe and then inferior. And then just like, you know, here on the right side, since we got through, we also got the middle lobe as well. So that's what that is. Uh, we refer to... Uh, these lines here let me get rid of the writing real quick we refer to these like lines that like divide out the lungs as the fissures right and so um, since the one on the bottom for uh the inferior lobe right we, we call this this is the oblique fissure and then that's the only fissure that uh the lefty has but then the righty also has one we call the horizontal fissure because it's a little bit more upright a little bit more horizontal back, like true so that's the naming of that um Okay, so it's the apex, right? Like think of the letter A, right? So like the apex and the base is like the bottom of the lung. And so, right, okay, let's keep going. Okay, so um, here's a side view. So apex of the lung, and then this is like the base of it. And then so down here is what we call the diaphragmatic surface. And so what that means is that diaphragm muscle is down here. And so the lungs are not operated on their own, right? So there's this like muscle, it's a skeletal muscle known as the diaphragm. And like based on its ability to expand and contract, or relax, I should say, and contract, it pushes on uh, the lungs and either pushes air out or uh, allows it to kind of come back in when it uh, is able to contract and like it allows it to kind of have a little more space in, in the pleural cavities, I guess. Um, let's see here. What do we got? Lobular bronchi, right? So this one on either lobe. So there's a very large um, ones, right? Um, pulmonary ligaments as well, right? Connective tissue. Good. 
Okay, so um, a cross section. Okay, this is interesting because it's like on a cadaver. So uh, right here, you can imagine this is the heart just for reference. And so uh, here is one compressed lung. And what's kind of interesting here is you can actually see like debris, right? So this is, you know, most lungs are really like this. Like they're not all perfect and super juicy. There is some levels of destruction. And down here you can see like where the bronchi 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 are you know dividing out as well as like like vascularization into the lungs these darkened ones as well um oh that's just a big that's aorta so hopefully you just you know that's not really part of what we're looking at um so let's see here uh the pleural cavities okay so look at all this like kind of black space around this is plural because it's more than one it's two and so when we talk about the pleural cavity uh, it's going to be that surrounds the lungs because, again, there's two of them. Right. The good stuff. It's neat that there was a little patho on there for you. Okay, so we talked about the base of the lung, which is, like, the bottom part. And we talked about the apex of the lung, which is, like, the top part. Um, and the costal surface is actually going to be the side that pushes against the rib cage, right? So it's the – it's – um the fur, you know, the closest to the rib cages. Um, the metastinial surface is facing towards the heart, right? So if this is the heart right here. So this is it. Um, the hilum or the hilum, either way, is a slit through which the lung receives uh, the main bronchus. So it's like that insertion point itself, right? It's usually right about medium. Um, blood vessels also are going to follow it, the lymphatic vessels as well as the nerves. So those. So the lungs are really packed in there and they're crowded by a lot of the organs around them. So remember that pleural cavity with the uh, serosa is super, super important. Um, so uh, we do not fill the entire rib cage. They are not symmetrical, right? We talked about them, um, but the right one having a few, few lobes, right? It has three, uh, whereas the left doesn't as much. It also has an indentation with a cardiac knot and or impression. Okay, so we'll get into some of the rest of the bronchi next, but I, oops, wonky. oh my goodness, oh, too much of a preview, right? Okay, well, in the meantime, that is the lungs, and I hope that was helpful, and I hope you are having a wonderful day. Bye-bye.